The first major way tends to be avoidance. Avoid the risk. And I have told you before, when my children were younger, we never even considered moving into a property or buying a property that had a pool or a lake. What's the best way to avoid any drowning possibilities? To not have a pool or a lake. Just completely avoid the problem. That is the easiest way, as far as I'm concerned, is to avoid the problem. Now, if you cannot avoid the problem, the second way is controlling the risk. And we see this typically as the first step to most people. David, that guy in Tennessee, he has got a Sonatrol card for the front door of the apartment building. This is how he minimizes the number of people in his building that don't belong there. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Those are those cards that you, you walk up to and you swipe and either magnetically or you swipe the stripe or the proximity and boop, it unlocks the door. That would be a method of control. Fire suppression systems, that's all they are, is a risk mitigation. You can't really avoid the fire if you're in a kitchen cooking, but you can have a fire suppression system that would control that risk more. That's another method of control. So you can avoid it or you can control it. Now, the last two methods actually work inverse of each other. I can actually retain some of the risk or I can transfer the risk to another person and let them worry about it. Would it not be cool if I could pay someone else to take the risk for me? It certainly would be cool. It would be really great if we started a company that would insure me so that I would not get harmed and take the risk. Ta-da! That's what an insurance company is, folks. That's all an insurance company is. You are paying them to take the risk for you. Hey, I'm a terrible driver. I'm gonna go get a car company to insure me in case I have another bumper car accident, all right? So that is what an insurance company is. And the more you retain, the less you transfer, right? There's only 100% risk. So if I keep 10, I'm transferring 90. If I keep 50, I'm transferring 50. So I keep some and I transfer some. And obviously, the more I retain, the less I would transfer and the cost of that transfer would go down. Now you understand when people say, if I raise my deductible, meaning I'm keeping more risk, therefore I'm transferring less, my cost of that insurance policy goes down. That's literally what we're talking about. If I want to lower my deductible, I am raising the amount I transfer, the more likely they're going to have to pay, therefore it's going to cost me more for that insurance policy. Now, there are several different types of insurance policy that we're gonna talk about. And over on page 381, let's go through this list real quick so we can understand what they are. The first one I wanna talk about is called fire and hazard insurance. Guess what this covers? They're kind of sneaky on how they name this stuff. It covers fire and hazards, all right? But what it really covers is the physical building from damage. 
So think of fire and hazard coverage as insurance on the physical building itself. All right. Uh, I want to jump down to the third one so I can do these together. Consequential loss. Sometimes you hear this cost called loss of business insurance. This would be insurance against the business that is going on in that physical building. And then the third one of those is called uh, general liability insurance. This deals with the people that come into your property to visit your business inside of this physical building. Workers' comp is a version of this that covers your employees. So what I, why I put these three together is think of them like this. The one is against the building. The other's against the insurance, or I'm sorry, is against the business in that building. And the third one is for the people that come in to use your business in that building. So typically all three of those you see go together. Fire and hazard, consequential loss, general liability. Covers my building, my business, and the people that come in. Workers' comp is a version of general liability because it's only geared towards your employees. Whereas consequential loss is for a client coming into your office. Now let's go back and catch a couple. Flood insurance we've talked about. That is for rapid accumulation of water. The flood insurance we've discussed. Contents and personal property. <clears throat> Contents and personal property is the actual true name of what most of you guys call renter's insurance or tenant's insurance. It covers your stuff inside of my apartment building. I've got fire and hazard insurance on my apartment building, but if it burns to the ground, it doesn't cover your television or your computer. That would need to be covered by your contents and personal property insurance, which most people call renter's insurance. People that live in condos also would get contents and personal property because the condo association itself would be paying the structure. You pay in monthly to the COA, but the COA buys the policy for all the buildings, all right? So you would still go out and get contents and personal property if you lived in a condo. Casualty insurance, vandalism, break, glass breaking, things of that nature. Sound like a train going through here. And then the last one's called a charity bond. Now, charity bond, and I want you to think of it like this. All of the insurances we just spoke about are very stationary. My casualty insurance or my general liability would protect you if you came into my school and fell and hit your head and now you're bleeding everywhere. I would have to use my general liability insurance. So thank God I don't have any. I would have to drag you out into the hallway so that the building owner, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so they're stationary, but a surety bond, the best way to understand it is it is placed upon a person so that when this person goes into your building, or place of residence or apartment that they are insured in case they do something in your apartment, like steal a TV, put a hole in your drywall, 
So when you see car vans driving around and it says Billy Bob's Plumbing license and bonded, what they're trying to tell you is that we are a sufficient professional grade, that we have a plumber's license and we have insurance in place. That's what the bonded is. If that plumber were to come into my house to work on plumbing and he tears up something, his bond might cover my damage. I have a what they call a performance bond on the, me at the school. So you, in fact, did pay for the floor shim because it's called a performance bond, all right? Basically, what it's saying is, if I fail to perform, you guys can hit my bond and get your money back. Most all of you paid in advance. You showed up to class, and there's a sign on the door that says, hey, thanks for your money. I'm in the Bahamas. You guys could have made a claim against the school, and my bond would have paid off because it is a performance ensuring that I actually have the class. It's a performance bond. It would be against me, all right? So it's an insurance policy, so to speak, but it mainly is a traveling policy. When that HVAC guy goes to your house, then he goes to your neighbor's house, then he goes to one across the street, it would follow him around whereas the ones we talked about previously are stationary that cover my property, my fire and hazard, my consequential loss, my general liability. You leave my building, my insurance doesn't cover you anymore. You go out and go to uh, Walmart, my liability is not gonna help you because it covers my building. If you get more than one of these, it is often called a multi-peril policy. Your homeowner's insurance, when, some, when people say, hey, I had to get homeowner's insurance, it would cover structure, health and hospital for people that get hurt. So it is a multi-peril policy. We just wrap it up and call it one homeowner's insurance when actually it's a combination of two or three of these. You may have casualty against your glass getting broke. You may have general liability for people coming to visit you and for a barbecue. Plus, if it catches on fire, you got uh, a policy against the structure. So it's a multi-peril policy. <clears throat> now, dealing with insurance claims, there are several different ways and several different types of insurance policies and we may have touched on this, but I can't remember. There's one, remember, that is called a cash policy and one that's called a replacement policy. The cash policy pays you the value of whatever happens, cash. The replacement policy actually pays you what it would cost to replace it. The difference in that is called coinsurance. And that difference would come from the difference in the cost of the premiums that you're saving every month on the cash. So you save that amount of money. And when you need that, you just go get the money you've been saving and use it to add to the cash the insurance gave you. And you go out and you buy the new policy. Now with houses, it's very similar You've got an $80,000 policy uh, and an $80,000 house, you are 100% covered. You've got an $80,000 house with a $40,000 policy, you are 50% covered. Now, when you make a claim of 5,000, this one is gonna pay you 5,000 because you're 100% covered. This one is only going to pay you half of it because you're 50% covered. And once again, there is a difference of 
And that would come from the difference in the price of the value of your policies that you save every month. You would put that in a bank and when you need it, you come here, all right? Now, let's go back, let me make sure I make this clear. I will here to tell you that this scenario right here will never happen if you have a loan <clears throat> because your lender is going to require that you have at least enough money in the insurance to pay off their lien so that if your house burns to the ground, they at least get clean by getting the insurance money and paying off your lien. And once again, we talked about, remember, that's why when you create an escrow amount, the pity payment, principal, interest, taxes, we talked about so that lender doesn't go to tax lien, and your insurance so that your house doesn't burn to the ground, your lender will pay it for you. So that's why they collect that pity payment and put some of your house payment in an insurance escrow amount because they want you to make sure you have insurance to protect their lien. Thumbs up. Any questions on chapter 19? Now, one of the things I noticed the other day was it seems like when there's a question, both mics kind of get muted a little bit. So if there's a question, let me know and we'll all stop talking so we can hear the one question because on the playback, it sounded a little different than what it would in real life. All right. Are we all good with chapter 19? All righty then, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you have other questions, feel free to email me, Raymond at realuniversity.com. This conference will now be recorded. Well, crap.